I'd like to welcome everyone to our Mexican fiesta. Today I'll be making a, a, a vegan taco filling. So what I'll be using today is actually Beyond Beef. There's actually a few different brands you can get. There's a Boca. There is a Morning Star. Morning Star does contain milk and eggs, but uh, if you're okay with that, that would be fine. There's also Gardein, which is another vegan brand meat replacement that you can use. So, uh, but I like Beyond Beef. It's been out for about a year and it's very good. The texture is, uh, makes it very meaty. So what I have here, this is a half an onion, a medium sized onion. I'm gonna actually use a quarter of that. And this is a small Roma tomato right here, uh, chopped finely. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, add our extra virgin olive oil to the pan. I'm going to turn it up. Just a few little dollops. This is about two tablespoons. Go ahead and just add half of that onion. And then all the tomato. And then the additional seasonings I'll be using today is just basic iodized sea salt, uh, garlic salt, and or garlic powder. You don't always need garlic salt. If you had just garlic powder and the regular salt, that would be fine. So you're going to let this saute just for a few minutes. So for the sake of time, I'll just get everything in the pot. Uh, we'll add just a little bit of salt. And don't worry, you can add more salt at the end. You can always add it at the end, but you can't take it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our Beyond Beef. A little secret with these meats, because they all come frozen, what you want to do is uh, let them thaw. That way they'll be able to brown first, because they're frozen and it has a lot of water in it. If you take it out maybe an hour or two before you're going to use it, it's not going to spoil. It's not going to do that because it isn't meat, so you're okay leaving it out. Even though You can put it in the refrigerator overnight. That's actually what I did. Go ahead and let it uh, give it a little stir. And for taco seasonings, um, I use Pioneer. Uh, this one does not contain whey. A lot of the uh, McCormick and Lowry's has whey in it. And like I said, that's a milk byproduct. And if you have milk sensitivities, it might mess with you. So uh, I use this one. Actually, uh, also Winco has really good brands uh, that don't have all the whey and the milk added to it. So. Uh, be careful with this. It can be very uh, on the strong side because this is only 10 ounces of meat compared to what you would get in a normal pound, which is 16. So we'll probably add about half of it to start. And hopefully you can smell that a little bit. Just taking... Tasting just, uh, smelling just like regular uh, taco meat. Taco is one of my uh, favorite all-time dishes. It's very simple to make. You can do a lot with it. So there, we'll add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, <laughs> you could use adobo. I heard that in the background. Adobo's good. You just have to be a little easy on it because it does have uh, the salt that would raise your blood pressure. So just a little dash of garlic to taste. If you like it garlicky, go ahead and add a little bit more. If you don't, add less. So you can omit it all together. Then I'll add a little splash of salt also. A secret is to um, 
season in layers. So if you have the, the vegetables sauteing, you would add a little bit of salt. You want to be careful adding garlic that early. You could burn it. But salt, just a little bit, that'll bring out the flavor of the vegetables. And then when you add in your meal, uh, your meat replacement or even your vegetables or your beans again, you could add another layer of salt. Uh, that's called layering your flavors. You got a question? This was uh, for the camera. I have another one. I ripped it off. It's Pioneer brand. It's gluten free. Uh, you can usually get these at Albertsons. But um, like I said, Winco has a lot of their just store brand. The Winco brand is probably one of the best ones. They're very inexpensive. They usually cost about 50 cents. And they don't have whey in them. They have just a lot of the uh, seasonings that you would use. So you just let that go for a few minutes. And the, the fact that it's not meat, you can actually taste it right now. So I'll go ahead and uh, just get a little taste just to make sure the seasonings are right. Go. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit much more of uh, the taco seasoning. Just a little bit more. Though you can't see from the audience, it's pretty much done. Something I like to do is let it sit and simmer uh, 10, 20, 30 minutes on real low heat. The flavor really comes together. You can even turn it off after 10 minutes and just uh, let it sit and the flavor really uh, gets through the meat. So for the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and turn this down. What I did over here is I did the same thing in advance, same measurements, but what I did was added just so you can see a small can of black beans and also a small little can of corn. Just to stretch it, you can get um, just some extra nutrition. Uh, also get some, sneak some uh, things that maybe your kids won't like in there. Uh, it's a good way just to uh, even stretch the meal. Um, the black beans have a lot of protein, a lot of fiber. So, yes, this was, uh, this was two bags. So I just doubled the proportions. This was two bags of the meat. I actually used one and a half seasonings, of the, uh, packets of seasoning, a half of uh, uh, medium-sized onion. I used a quarter with this one. And also two whole tomatoes. And then the same thing with the salt and pepper, uh, not pepper, salt and garlic to taste. So, are there any questions? This is done right now. So the longer you let it, the longer you let it simmer, the better it's going to get. And we'll also be serving it just with the tortillas. We'll warm up. We also have salsa. So. Okay. So the next recipe that we'll be making is um, tofu, and this is a sumaya tofu, and it's a uh, non-GMO. And I recommend that you do the non-GMO. Um, it's just healthier for you because of the soybeans. They, um, the uh, the non-GMO, it's um, it's better for um, it's there's not like pe pesticides or anything harmful. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna open your block, you know, with your knife, and you're gonna put it on on a on the mat so you can um, cut it. And there's different ways of making tofu. Uh, what you can do also, you can get a napkin and kind of like press it so the water can come out. And I've seen when people um, put like, like an actual weight on it so all the, the moisture comes out. Um, you can do that too. You don't have to because also um, when, depends if you want it really dry and you don't want water on it, then you can do that. Um, but if you, if you don't want to, you don't have to do that. So you kind of wring out the water. Now for this one, it's um, slices, so you can add to your um, sandwiches. Or you could um, cut them in strips and they can be like chicken, you know, vegan chicken. Or you could play with tofu, you could add any seasonings and it will get the flavor. So the seasonings I use, which I always have in hand, is a dry onion granulated. I, I do one teaspoon for um, each block and dry oregano 
uh, two teaspoons and also Himalayan salt, pink Himalayan salt because this is better than the white one has all of the um, all of the minerals and everything but if you don't have it you can use whatever you have and also we're gonna use drizzles or a tablespoon of um, extra virgin olive oil okay so you're gonna get your ingredients and you can put them in a plate or a bowl and you can just mix them so they can all combine and you can use different seasonings too you could use dill you could use a, a granulated powder. You could do any flavor. You could do paprika, chipotle powder, anything. So this is to sprinkle on the top. So now you're gonna, um, let me get more napkin. Just depends on the tofu. This one is very wet. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna be cutting it. You can cut it as, as thin as you want or thick. This is how I do it. So I um, do kind of like medium sizes and just put them in my mat. And have your skillet um, on so it can be heating or you could use your stove, whatever you, you have in hand. You can just do it right here. And what I do is, um, if there's more water, I press it. If not, I'll just leave it like that. And I start adding my seasonings on the top. Only one side. And then when I put them in the skillet, then I add um, the rest on the top. Okay. So then you can add in to your skillet. You could add more, because this is the bottom. And you drizzle some olive oil. You could do a tablespoon if you want to be exact. And kind of like move it around. I recommend you don't like deep fry your tofu, because you don't want to do that too much every day. It's not healthy for you. Okay. So you just add them there. And then you you um you add the rest to the top. You can also c cut them like in big chunks, like blocks, and um, you could do the same steps. And then at the end, you just cut them smaller to like squares and you could add them to your soups. Instead of like chicken or meat, this, this can be your substitute too. So you just wanna sprinkle everything in there. Kinda tap it. Can you guys smell the oregano? Yeah, can you guys smell it? Yeah. Not yet? Okay. Okay, so, so this is one recipe. The next one is coming up for the, um, for the tofu. And um, you can, you could do it as big as you want or small, thin. See, it's thinner. And you can just check on them to see if they're um they're getting um like a golden brown, you, you don't want it too burned or too like uh, mushy or you, you want it golden brown.
and then you could do for the rest. So you can do one teaspoon, and two. And then you could do one teaspoon of um, of the salt. Let me see one is done so I can show it to you. Yeah. So the longer you leave them in there, the water will absorb and um, it will be more crispy and not so wiggly. Because I know people don't like tofu when it's like really mushy or soft. So I suggest that that you leave it longer. Don't, don't think, um, oh, it's done in like like three minutes or no, it, it takes a while with this tofu because of the water. So we can, um, we can leave it here a little longer. Okay. Yeah, it's not ready. Okay, so right here you can see the color. It's changing to like that golden brown that I told you. No, you can see it over there. And this one is just like a firm. Yeah, it's firm. You can do extra firm. It, it's more better, so you can use it for your sandwiches and, and for your soups. And you, you can just wait for it to cook thoroughly, and then you can wait a little bit for it to uh, warm up, and then you add it to your soup or your sandwiches. So that's, um, that's one recipe. And um, we'll be showing you the next Okay, recipe. so um, we're gonna be making the next recipe. Uh, well, actually, I'll be explaining to you because it's already made. It's uh, brown rice. And uh, brown rice, um, she used, my mom made it. She used brown rice, but it's, um, it's called Spanish rice. And um, you could use this one. Um, you could do the organic. I, I, I advise you do the, the organic because it's a meal that you're gonna be eating almost every day. So you want to get the whole grain too. And um, the reason we use brown rice instead of white is because it's uh, healthier for you. When you use the white rice, usually what happens, it stays in your system. So um, you, you're unable to, <clears throat> excuse me, digest it that, um, that fast or um, you have problems digesting it. Okay, so these are um, the steps that um, we did, what my mom did for this. Um, she got the, the brown rice, and what you do is you toast it in a skillet or in your stove, and you toast it until it's like a golden brown color. And then after that, um, you have a pot on the, on the stove with boiling water. What you want to do, you want to add it to, to, your, um, to your rice that you already toasted. And also the reason you toast this rice, it's different from the white, is because you're trying to... Um, Help it cook faster while you're toasting it, uh, wh when it's toasted. Okay, so um, after you do that, you let it cook. You, you literally have to let it all cook, and then you do your next step. You're going to get your blender, and you're going to add six tomatoes. Um, you could do Roma tomatoes, uh, or you could do the, um, the other um, kind of tomato, like the vine, like the vine tomatoes. And she did two purple onions. And she did um, three cloves of garlic. And you could add um, salt to your taste, to whatever um, you prefer it. So once you blend it, you add your salt and you, you taste it, okay? It, there's nothing wrong with tasting it. Um, also, you could add uh, veggie broth, or um, you could do three tablespoons, which about this big, three tablespoons. Or you could also use this one better than bouillon. It's almost the same thing. So whatever, um, Veggie, um, veggie bouillon or veggie broth you have in hand. Also, um, if 
um, later on we'll be doing also condiments. So we'll teach you guys how to do uh, broth from, from scratch if you want to do it, whatever you want. And then um, after you add that, after you blend it and everything, you're going to put whatever you blend, the, the sauce basically, and you're going to add it to your rice. You're going to be adding to the cook, cooked rice already because this rice takes, I think, a little bit like an hour or sometimes depends if you're doing like a lot, it takes longer. So um, that's why you want to try to cook one thing first and then add it all together because my mom said that or else everything will become like mush, like, like a pudding, like, you know, mushy. You don't want it to be mushy. So let me show you how it looks. Now I'll try to make this rice and it never looks like this. <laughs> it always looks like white and doesn't smell this good. So, so this is how it looks. And, um, you know, you, you know, I've heard people, oh, no, it's not going to come out good with uh, brown rice. It does. It, you just need to, uh, you need to, like, master it and find out, like, you know, like my mom, first she cooked it thoroughly and then she did the sauce. So, you know, there, there's ways that you could eat healthier. So don't stress about, you know, oh, I can't do it or anything. So here's how it is. And um, I think that's it. So thank you. Okay. Um, today I'm going to make arroz con leche, or in English you can call it rice pudding. So you're going to need two pounds of rice. Um, you're also going to need um, one and a half gallons of milk. And if you want to make your rice pudding looser, you can use um, two gallons of milk, just if you want to. So first you're going to get your rice, your two pounds of rice, and cook it in a rice cooker. And then you're going to um, take it out and put it in a pot such as this. And the reason you should cook it in a rice cooker is because it it keeps all the vitamins inside. If you boil it, it might lose some of the vitamins. And then you're gonna add your almond milk, your two gallons of almond milk. And then you're just gonna put it on medium heat so it can boil a little bit, but don't let it boil too much or it'll boil over. And then you're going to add um, some ground, um, let me see, yeah, two tablespoons of, of ground cinnamon. And then you're gonna add three tablespoons of vanilla and one cup of sugar. It has, uh, you can use unpro unprocessed sugar. And then you're going to just stir it all up and you're gonna let it um, simmer for a little and, and you can stir it again. Make sure the, it doesn't stick to the bottom. And you can add more, you taste it, and if you, if you need more cinnamon, you can add more or more vanilla or milk to make it looser. And then you, um, you stir it again just in case, because it might get a little bit weird. <laughs> so then you, then you um, it, it should be thick like a pudding. It, if you want it looser, like a drink, then you can add more milk. And that's how you make rice cream. Oh yeah, you can use um, different kind of milk. Oh yeah, you can use different kind of milk like rice milk or soy milk, whichever milk you want. And if you use vanilla milk, like vanilla almond milk, you don't really have to use um, vanilla if you don't want to. It, you can eat it hot or cold. If I recommend cold if you're eating it for a dessert. And if you're eating for it for breakfast, you can serve it warm, like an oatmeal. And that's how you make it. Um, today, I'm going to make tofu scramble. It's um, basically like, um, if you guys use, um, you know, used, used to eat regular um, eggs. So it's like a vegan version. So we use tofu to make that. Um, I use this one. You can use also the um, extra firm. And it's um, less, there's less water in there. So um, let me show you guys what I usually, oh, what I did before, I um, chop up some, um, um, actually no, it's white onions, white onions and um, green onions. And you can also use tomatoes if you want. 
but then it takes longer to cook because you know tomatoes has a lot of water and you know you wait at the end for all the water to you know come out or evaporate then you can use it and um so what i do i usually put a little bit of olive oil in your a little bit more and um get my spoon you saute that till it's um I don't know. I like onions. I don't know if you guys do, but I love onions. It makes everything um, taste better. That's just me. Onion. And you stir that till it's soft. And then while it's, um, you know, till your onions are soft, while it's getting there, um, what I usually do, you know, you cut up, you get the water out, you drain the water, and... Um, some people cut it up, but I usually use my hand, you know, to smash it. So, and then you just, you know, crumble it up in there. And mine's all clean, so I did wash them, so they're not dirty. Because, <laughs> you know, you don't want nobody cooking with dirty hands. So you do this, and you smash it up. You go smash my hand. Can you guys smell the onions? It smells so good. And um, I don't usually measure. I kind of just taste. So, but this is what I what I use. I use yeast flakes. Um, you can get this at um, Winco. They have it in bulk. That's the best place to me. Yeah, it makes everything cheesy. Like if you make macaroni and cheese. You can put that in there. And it has um, a lot of vitamins. I know vitamins B12. I'm sorry. A little bit. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear. <laughs> yes. And it's really, um, it has vitamin B12 in there. So it's really good for us. And when I make macaroni and cheese or um, lasagna, my husband, he makes lasagna, you put it in there, it makes it very cheesy. And I use turmeric, turmeric is really good too. And what we, it's good, the coloring, because you know how wool eggs is yellow, but since we don't use wool eggs, so we do that one. Yeah. To make it, give it that nice, you know, yellow color. And it's also good for you. And this is the salt that I that we use. It's the um, it's sea salt and the pink one, I think this one is. And I do um, onion powder and also garlic powder. Yes, you can do fresh too. Like sometimes um, I'll do like some garlic, fresh garlic, and you can press it and you saute with the onions. And it's really good. And you know. If you, um, let's say you were about to get a cold or something and your fresh garlic is also good for that, so you put it in there. And it's good for you, so you can just eat that. And let me put the yeast flakes. Whatever they want, right? You can put whatever you like. When I make it for my family, I put um, tomatoes. I like tomatoes. Tomatoes, um, you can use. It's up to your liking, basically. 
some people they put soy sauce in there and sometimes we also do fresh garlic like I was telling you guys earlier um, um, I have a friend actually um, he's not really a fan of um, tofu and um, but I made this they came over um, to our house and I made this for them why well, was his family and um, they liked it so I guess I did something right so you can use whatever seasoning you want you can put some fresh herbs if you want that you can put bell peppers my kids they don't like bell peppers so but you can chop them more small so you might get away with it <laughs> they might not see that but so far what works for us is the fresh garlic the um the tomatoes and the onions and the green onions you know and um even i guess now maybe we make it too many times because they're telling us that it, they're tired of it but every time their dad eats it it's something else because it comes up with something else um different recipes and i'll also use garlic salt Uh, some people also, oh, actually, sometimes we can also you can also use um, cheese, a little bit of cheese if you want it cheesy. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's really up to your liking, what you like, what you you know. And um, I don't know if you guys, if the camera is on it, it's um, I don't know if you guys can. See see it see like it's um it looks like um you know scrambled eggs yeah. instead of scrambled eggs it's just scrambled tofu <laughs> and then everything is smashed up nicely so let me try and taste and see if it needs anything that's the, that's the fun part the thing about tofu, sometimes you need a lot of... <laughs> you guys can't have any <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I'm going to try and see. Mm, not bad. So yeah. <laughs> a little bit more salt. And yeah, and we're good to go. So this is my version of making tofu. But I hope I was able to, um, you know, explain it to you guys. Make it as simple as possible. But it's really not hard. Once you get the hang of it, it is very quick and easy to make it. And um, that's my version. Thank you so much. When dealing with tofu, um, tofu is going to absorb any of the sauces that you put in it. So think of maybe an enchilada sauce. Um, which is one of my favorites. You would have your enchilada sauce. You can make it from scratch or you can get a store-bought brand. You would cube up your tofu and just saute it in a pan, low and slow, for at least about an hour. And it's gonna absorb all those flavors. Uh, you can make a salsa verde, mole sauces, just to keep the theme of Mexican. Uh, you can do that also. You can do uh, bell peppers and onions with the garlic and just saute it. The longer you saute it, the better. It's going to come out and absorb, like I said, all those flavors. Uh, another thing you can do to cut down on the cooking time and actually make the uh, help with the texture of tofu, because if you don't squeeze out all the water, it can be very mushy. Something you can do is drain it overnight. If you know, if you know you're going to use it the next day, you can take it out of the package. You can put it in a strainer or like a colander or strainer. Put it in the refrigerator with a bowl underneath it to catch all the water. So then overnight, and then in the morning, it'll be a, uh, you'll, you'll still have some water left over. So it'll get all that water out, that moisture out. So it'll have a better uh, texture and also brown a lot easier if that's something you choose to do. Another thing you can also do is bake it. If you bake it for uh, one, of our, uh, one of my favorite recipes, cubing it up and just putting soy sauce on it, or was it tamarind? 
tamarick or tamarini. Uh, tamarini, I think, is the uh, soy sauce substitute. Or if you like Bragg's, aminos. Uh, putting that on it and just putting it in the oven uh, for at least an hour, checking it every 15 minutes, just turning it. Uh, it creates a nice firm texture. It also soaks in all that, uh, all the uh, whatever sauce you would put on it. And uh, it has a really good flavor. You can actually use that in t uh, for a chicken salad. You can use that for uh, stir fries. Uh, one of my goals actually is to do a jerk chicken using tofu. So what I would do is get the jerk seasonings, chop up the tofu, and bake it in the oven with the jerk seasoning on it. Uh, that's something hopefully we'll bring out in the next couple of weeks uh, or in the next couple of months in our next uh, uh, cooking classes. I'm going to be making thumbprint cookies for you. I'll pick one up. I'll eat this later. But this is what they look like. Mine are kind of big, but you can make them a little smaller if you like. <laughs> so what you do, I like to um, double my recipe. This is what you get when you double your recipe. So what you want to do is you want to do six cups of um, whole wheat pastry flour. And then you want to get six cups of old-fashioned oats. You want to get the whole oats, not the small, uh, quick oats. Now you can, um, you're going to need, um, you're going to need six cups of any nuts that you want. This one I used almond, but these ones right here, I used uh, walnuts. Now with the, with the nuts, you're going to have to ground them. If you don't, if you don't have a good, um, blender you can use a coffee grinder and they ground them really really well six six cups and then you're going to get maple syrup don't get, don't get the ancient Mima ones. <laughs> get the real maple, maple syrup. <laughs> and you're going to need three cups. And this will be your substitution for sugar. And it's not, it, it will not over, it won't make your cookies too sweet. And, and then you'll need three cups of oil. Vegetable oil, peanut oil. I wouldn't use coconut oil, it would have that coconut taste. Oh, I like it. You could, you could use it if you want the taste. Sorry. Sorry, I spelled oil. And then you just mix it. She's asking if you can use honey. 
Um, you could, but the honey is so thick that you will need more honey than you would need uh, maple syrup. Right, you're gonna need some muscles. <laughs> And what you could do, because they get really sticky, you can put oil in your hand. And rub it and make your balls. That's it. So you make a nice size ball. And then you stick it on your cookie sheet and put your thumb in there. So you'll have a, a, a hole inside. Not a complete hole, but a, a dip. And then you take a preserve. You can do strawberry preserve, blueberry preserve. I have a raspberry preserve. This is raspberry. This one is strawberry. And then you take it and you just put it right in the middle. And then you bake it at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes. And this, if you if you can uh, you can but it your your the the mixer it's gonna it's gonna stick because it's not like it's not like a cake mix so it's better to spoon it yeah it's better to spoon it yeah and this is what your cookie looks like